it's Rax, bringing you another guide on one of the most important builds for Necros in Season 17, the Z Necro. This role is mandatory in the meta for rat runs or lawn mage runs in Season 17. And this build is a lot of fun to play. And as this build, you are the leader and you rush forward, you freeze everything, and then you spawn globes so the, mage, so the Lawn Mage Necros can just murder everything. So here's a little bit of footage of us running speed 103s. I made this build on the fly in like 20 minutes, so it's pretty easy to craft. But let's go through all the gear and skills and play style and tips and tricks so you can run this and have a lot of fun in Season 17. All right. One of the first things I want to point out to you is how you move and use your skills is actually critically important in this build. So let me show you something. If you go to options and key bindings, come down here and look at your skills, your skill slot for devour. Mine's in one. You're going to want to bind it to some key on your numpad. So I bound mine to numpad one. And if you haven't already done this, if you don't have a use for this, you're gonna wanna bind forced move both to mouse wheel up and mouse wheel down. Now, let me show you why. So in this build, we want to constantly be spamming devour all the time. But if you're like me, the way that I typically move in Diablo is I hold my left click down and I just hold it down forever and walk as I cast my skills. That's how I normally play. That is not very efficient for this build because if you play like this, you have to be spamming devour like this constantly and your hand's gonna explode after like 20 minutes. So let me show you a trick. Now, remember, we bound it to numlock one. So here's what I do. I hold one down on the numpad. So I'm holding it down right now. And then while holding it down, I push numlock. And then I release them. And my necromancer is spamming devour. Okay, this is a mechanic in Diablo. It's not a macro. It's not a trick. It works on your game as well. Now, why is this important? Well, now we're spamming the skill, but remember, if you hold down the mouse click with that input constantly going, you cannot be spamming devour. So you have two remedies for this. One, you can click everywhere that you want to, and if I click here, you'll see my necromancer is spamming devour. So you can move like this, and we're spamming devour. And that's, that's a fine solution. Another option is to use the scroll wheel to force move. And I find, and other people, other people also find, it's a much better option. So that is both how to do the numlock trick and a good option for learning how to move on this build. Okay. And to shut off the numlock, you do it the exact same way. You push one, then you push numlock, and it's off. One numlock, it's on. One numlock, it's off. Okay? And just to show you one thing before we get into the build, the idea is you, with the numlocking, when you cast Land of the Dead, it puts the corpses everywhere. And look at all the globes that come up. Mm, those juicy globes. That's what we need. All right, everyone, let's go over everything and let's just do it in one shot. I apologize if I make any mistakes. Just a quick comment about this build before we get in for the Z neck. And by the way, Z neck, the Z means zero, meaning you do zero damage. It means that you're a support character. So if you ever see Z in front of a build, Z monk, Z barb, Z neck, that's what it means. It means a support build. But anyway, for this build, you are the leader, meaning you're ahead of the group because you need to freeze them and you need to spawn the globes, which means that the party needs to follow where you go, even if you go the wrong way. You click the pylons, you decide what monsters to skip, everything. So remember, 
you are the leader. And in general, for the stats, we need perfect CDR. You need perfect CDR rolls on everything to get 69%. We'll go over that in a second. And the rest is going to be all survivability. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So we want to stay alive and we want perfect CDR on everything. And one more comment. There are a lot of different variations of this build. I've tried them. I've theory crafted them. In my opinion, this is the very best one. It is not the build that has the absolute most CDR. You could wear Borns and get up. Instead of 69, you could jump to 72%. But in my opinion, it is absolutely not worth it. The buffs that you get running this variant, in my opinion, are the best. Okay, let's go over everything. In Geom, we want perfect CDR, as we want perfect CDR on everything. And then we want survivability stats. And then our cooldowns are reduced by 10 seconds after we kill an elite pack. This will give us infinite land of the dead, which we want up all the time. And we jump from elite pack to elite pack to elite pack, oftentimes with pylons because these are speed greater rifts. So this buff is up like all the time. Offhand, Storm Shield, it's just a very good survivability shield. Again, we want perfect CDR on it and just very good defensive stats otherwise. If possible, I find that the best secondary resistance is physical because monsters like the spear throwers can essentially one-shot you even with, even with very good survivability. So I, I always look for physical resist or health globe pickup as secondary if I have the choice. Captain Crimson's, you're going to want to craft the boots and the pants. And we're going for the two-piece bonus that gives us 10% CDR. These pieces can't normally roll CDR. We want as much of it as possible. So that's why we craft these two pieces. Now, make a comment here. We are going to socket with diamonds, even though we're in int class. Um, a lot of people may ask, is socketing vitality or is socketing rubies, armor? Better? The answer is no. Try it yourself. You'll see that your toughness is higher when you use diamonds. Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac. We reduce the cooldowns of our skills when we hit with a resource spending attack. Again, we're just trying to attack with our skills to bring back up Land of the Dead. We want Land of the Dead up all the time. Oculus Ring spawns the little golden halos on the ground. Our lawn mage necros will stand in it and do massive damage. Once again, we need perfect CDR. Two-piece pestilence gloves. Each corpse you consume fires a corpse lance at a nearby enemy. What we do is we cast land of the dead and since we're spamming devour, we're constantly consuming corpses. This is going to shoot our corpse lances everywhere and increase the monster's chance to be crit. Again, just trying to increase the damage for our necros. Same concept here with the pestilence shoulders. Again, perfect CDR is what you're going for. Leorx, looks like we're missing, are we missing a stat? Life for him. I'm, I'm not sure what's going on here. I'll, I'll fix it. But anyway, Leorx, we put a diamond in it for CDR, and this doubles the effect of our diamond, more CDR. Akilla, this, your resource is going to be very high all the time. It's just going to reduce your damage taken by 50%. Vigilante belt is the only belt in the game that can roll CDR. That's why we go for it. I think this is best in slot. We really need the CDR. If you are having trouble surviving, this could be something you could potentially slot out for dainties binding. When you curse enemies, you take less damage. So there's an option if you absolutely cannot live or don't have the gear. But um, in general, I would go for Vigilante. Halicon's Ascent. I don't know why it says when you use Vengeance, because it definitely works with Land of the Dead. So 
I don't know why this says this. I don't know if it hasn't been updated. So anyway, I'll make sure it is correct before uploading the video. But when you use Land of the Dead, it's going to cause them to jump and it's going to proc your strong arms, which are in the cube, which makes enemies take 30% more damage. I huh, wonder why it says that. That's confusing. And Nemesis Bracers, you click pylons and you're going to spawn an elite. We want elites. We kill elites in this build and you're always ahead of everybody. So it makes sense for you to wear them and um, get the elite to spawn. Let's go into the Paragon points as if we were Paragon 400. First you're going to want the movement speed and then start putting it into vitality for survivability. You can play around with putting some points into intelligence. You essentially just want to maximize your toughness on your character sheet. For offense, CDR is king, obviously. Then we can go attack speed for our skills. Credit damage and credit chance do absolutely nothing. Um, for defense, we want armor and all resist and life. Life is a good one as well. Life per second is last. It, it's better than nothing, but I'd go for that one last. In utility, I'd go for life per hit and resource cost reduction. One important thing about Z builds in, in general, you don't want Paragon points into area damage. There are some builds where it will lag you out, so you want zero area damage, so just don't put the points in if you're Paragon 800+. plus. Um, but with this particular composition, it's not really a problem. For the skills, Land of the Dead, Frozen Lands. This is kind of the bread and butter of the build. Okay, This is our big cooldown that we're essentially stacking all our cooldown on our gear for. When we activate this, it's going to freeze everything, and it's going to let, our, let us use our corpse skills at will for 10 seconds. That means we can devour, and it's going to spawn health globes everywhere, and it's going to shoot corpse lances everywhere and increase the mob's chance to be crit. So the whole point of this is to run slightly ahead of your group the entire time, not too far ahead, but just slightly ahead, and just keep popping land of the dead whenever we can. So when the lawn mage necros enter the room, one, the mobs are all frozen, and two, there are health globes being shot everywhere which with their Reaper's Wraps, as you may have seen in my other videos, will raise their essence to cast those super powerful mages and just erase the room. Corpse Lance Brittle Touch. If you look at the rune for Brittle Touch, enemies become brittle, increasing their chance to be crit by 5% for 5 seconds when they're hit for, with Corpse Lance. The main thing that you want to do here is... When, you're, when you have an elite pack, especially a yellow elite pack or the Rift Guardian, after you've popped the Land of the Dead, after you've been devouring and have the globes down, you want to target the yellow with this skill or the Guardian and attack them about three times. And that crit chance will stack to maximum for your Lawn Mage Necros. So they have a 100% chance to crit that mob and they will erase the elite. Devour Satiated, you could also take Devour Cannibalize. Cannibalize heals you, Sati Satiated gives you more health. So use whichever one you want, they're, they're both good. We're constantly devouring, so it's going to give us more essence and it's going to increase our life. Frailty Aura of Frailty, um, it's a curse that kills enemies at less than 15%. So if you're wondering... Why am I getting all the kills on the elites even though I do no damage? It's because of this curse. Aura of Frailty is just an aura that sits around your character and combined with the internal torment passive, if you curse them once, so if you walk over them, they're cursed forever. So that guarantees that you don't have to manually apply the curses and it stays on them. Blood Rush Metabolism Take the metabolism runes so you can dash twice. Blood Rush is the dash. You could take potency if you want for the extra armor with all of our cooldown blood rushes up quite often. So that's another option. I just go with the two dashes. And then Death Nova Blight. That's what we were doing earlier with that stutter stepping. This is the skill that we cast and it leaves a lingering patch of blight on the ground that slows enemies, which helps 
um, the Lawn Mage is 5, and it makes them deal 15% less damage. So um, there is another variation of this build that uses um, Bone Spear. The reason that I don't like Bone Spear as much is you have to aim it, and you already have enough things to worry about, like surviving. So um, go, go for this one as well. So passives. Blood is power. After we lose our health, we our cooldowns come back up. Well, cooldown means everything to us, so that's why we take this passive. Eternal Torment, we just talked about. Our curses last forever. As we run over the monsters with that aura, they're going to be cursed and they're going to die. Final service, if you die, you come back to life. Self-explanatory. And life from death, when you consume a corpse, it has a chance to spawn a health globe. Land of the Dead puts infinite corpses. We devour those corpses, which just counts as consuming them. That's what spawns the health globes. Legendary Gems, Gogok, more cooldown. Efficacious Toxin, more damage for our party. Ice Blink, more crit for our party. Now, this composition usually runs with a Z-Barb as well. If the Z-Barb is using Ice Blink, you don't need two of them. You could get rid of your Ice Blink for an Esoteric Alteration, which will give you tremendous survivability. Okay, last but not least, let's look at what's in the cube. Ahaverion Spear of Lysander, chance on killing a demon to grant a random shrine effect. So let's look at the shrines we can get. We can get bonus experience, we can get reduced damage taken, we can get increased resource generation and reduced CDR. Sounds amazing. Move speed and 25 yard gold and pickup radius. You get the idea. So it's just a cool little thing to cube to get those random shrine effects. And strong arms. Remember, I just, just did confirm the Halicon's Ascent, it does it does say Land of the Dead when you find it on a Necromancer, so it does work, and those guys jumping around is going to proc your strong arms and make us do 30% more damage. And finally, Briggs Wrath, uncursed enemies are going to be pulled to the tar target location when a curse is applied to them. It turns you into kind of a vacuum cleaner as you curse enemies, the enemies are pulled to you. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I'm streaming every day. We're going for rank one on the Necromancer this season, and I have one more guide to make for you guys on Necros. I'm going to show you guys how to play the Lawn Thorns solo build, which is one of the very best, if not the very best, solo build for pushing in the entire game. So like and comment and subscribe if this helped you, and there will be many more videos and many more streams coming. Thank you, everybody.